Okay, as uh, many of you probably know, just trying to make sure this is actually, um, I've been doing a lot of restoration work on this uh, 300, well, 300 year old house, yeah, it's getting a little bit repetitive me saying this all the time, but you know I've been doing this work on the house, uh, various bits of bobs, doing various rooms and stuff, repaired the ceiling up there, yeah, oh god, yeah, seems like ages ago, a couple of months back, uh, put, change this border around here, that looks a bit better, anyway, um, uh, anyway, I have this rascally cat uh, which crops up in my videos here and there called Stella. Um, I've got a photograph of her just sort of sitting around there which I'll pop in the video. There you go. Um, right, so basically um, I've been trying to work out how do I allow her to get come and go into this room. Because basically she's going to end up sleeping somewhere on this um, this box here or, or, or on one of these rocking chairs or I'm guessing um, don't want her up in my bedroom um, so I'm not going to allow her access um, freely up through a cat flap through the through that door there um, yeah, so I was playing around with different ways she could have come in one idea was actually um, allowing her to have a, a cat flap hole in the bottom of this uh, my, um, <coughs> my dummy uh, bookshelf here and be able to come up through the through the haunted cellar <laughs> um, but in the end I decided gonna have to go the boring way, the obvious way and allow her to come in through the front door so that involves cutting a hole in this door Cutting a hole in that door and cutting a hole in that door. Um, round and round in circles here because if I cut a hole in that door there, it means someone could stick their hand in through the cat flap and grab the mail when it drops out the le uh, drops in through the letterbox. So answer to that is I'm fitting a basket on the back of the, the letterbox to catch me mail, uh, hopefully that will uh, sort out the problem and will allow me to still put a cat flap in. I did toy around with putting the cat flap in the window there so that she could climb up on a ramp on the outside and come in through the window, through a cat flap in the window and then jump down and yeah and then cat flap through here and no 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 no. Yeah, but any, anyway. Um, thing is go round and round and you go, well, cat flaps, there are, you know, you go on eBay, you go and do a Google search and hunt down a cat flap and then try and find a cat flap which actually suits this room and this house and you, you can put anything in, old cat flap, uh, retro cat flap, antique cat flap, brass cat flap, copper cat flap, wooden cat flap, and virtually nothing pops up. So, uh, okay, so basically the nearest you can find on eBay is you can find this plastic one made by, um, this one's made by Stay Well, but there's a few companies making it. And um, basically, it's a usual big square plastic cat flap. And uh, this one's got a bit of a brown, slightly wood effect to it. And that, uh, that leaves you with doing that. And uh, to be honest, I don't really like it. Um, it's still plastic, it's big and square, with a big transparent window here. Um, the only feature it does have, which is nice, is it has the modern locking wheel. But, on the two cat flaps inside the house, 
you know, this one and the one in the next door in the kitchen, I don't need it to have a locking wheel unless I'm trying to lock her out of the out of the kitchen and keep her in here. But I can find any number of ways of doing that. And just stick a box or something in front of the hole. Um, so I thought I want something old fashioned, so I'm gonna have to make it myself because no one makes anything which really suits listed buildings, you know, like houses which are hundreds of years old. If you're trying to be nice and, you know, try to keep the overall look right. I don't even like having to cut a hole in here, but short of putting the toilet in here for her and leaving her penned in this room all the time when I'm at work, can't do it, um, you know. Uh, it's that or get rid of the cat. Um, so I'm going to have to cut a hole in here. Um, so basically what I've done is I've looked at the aperture, this flap, on a modern one. And I've then drawn that down onto a piece of paper. And that gives me this shape. Now Basically, what I've done is I've drawn a very narrow piece around the outside, and this part here is the actual cat flap section. So I've I've cut this away with some scissors, and that gives you that as the actual flap. Now these little stars I've put in the corners, and they're sort of uh, an idea I uh, I thought. I could use and uh, what they are is there to depict something which is on my family coat of arms now the standard family coat of arms is actually the shield which I've made um, it's the care coat of arms I made this before just before I got the house it's made out of steel folded the edges over turned them back um, and I put some wire in them wire folded and then I've put some leather on it two leather straps so it's pretty much functional right uh, yeah so um, that's the standard um, care coat of arms, uh, like battle shield, but there's a few derivatives of it, and um, you got the likes of this. Now uh, you can see there's the actual shield, and it's quartered, and they have this. Some of them have this sunburst on it. I don't know if this is focusing right. Yeah, they're focusing. So they have this sunburst. Um, like everything outside of the shield area is just, um, I think it's, is it called filigree? It's just decoration. It's not part of the actual crest itself. But um, some of them have this sunburst, and some of the drawings of them have the little face in the sunburst. You can find this quite common. In, um, in a lot of um, old um, pictures and architecture and stuff. Yeah, so if I come in here uh, in the kitchen, uh, basically uh, I bought this, uh, um, this was about two pound in Home and Bargain, I think it was. Uh, just a ceramic thing for hanging in the garden, but um, as I say, it's, uh, it's sort of on the family crest and quite often it does have this little face in it. So, um, yeah, with all sorts of brass stuff and you know, putting all sorts of things in here. Uh, like that. I made that up. Still got to finish it. That's going to be the door pull when I've uh, finished doing it. And that'll be the ring belt, the, the, the ringer for the uh, front door. Um, yeah, so 
where was up to now? Keep digressing, don't I? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so the idea with those little stars in the corners of the flap down there is to basically put something like that on. Now, I've been on eBay, and you can buy these. The little brass um, bears things, sun things with these faces on. And they're pretty cheap, so I don't know, five or six quid for six of them. Um, and that's sent from America. And basically, I can solder them on onto a piece of brass or a copper sheet. Right, so uh, you see where I'm coming from. The idea is I can basically have a nice sort of copper cat flap like that and uh, solder those. In. So recently I um, took out the copper hot water tank from upstairs because it wasn't being used anymore. So I've got a big sheet of copper in the garage. So I've got my shape that I want. So if I just come down here to uh, my garage, um, here is the uh, copper water tank which I've chopped up with an angle grinder, top and bottom. Uh, here's the old <coughs> top of the water tank and uh, that could actually make sort of a unusual garden feature if I clean all this uh, crummy paint that someone's put on it sort of turquoisey uh, it should look uh, it could look quite good you know cleaning it all back to the copper um, <clears throat> so that's the top of the tank underneath the tank <laughs> And the uh, the base I cut off the water tank has uh, made this sort of like large cat's drinking bowl. Um, I could take a water feed off my well and uh, divert a little bit of water into that, but this time of year in this weather, I don't really need it. Say so this is my uh, my uh, garage water diversion system and runs into there and um, and then comes off through a pipe down here and goes into the ground and stuff, you know? Anyway, uh, gets me back to this. So, uh, so basically I've chopped out that and then I've chopped out another little ring there that you'll see, which is like a, a bezel to make the porthole effect, which is like a... Uh, you, you know a diver's helmet? You know these brass or copper diver's helmets where they have this screw-on section on the on the front? The idea is to try and recreate that sort of look to it. Uh, quite like those sort of things. Anyway, this is... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. This, this copper, it's quite thin and easily workable. Look at that. So basically... You can chop it up with tin snips. In fact, if you haven't got tin snips, you can get these uh, relatively cheap pairs of um, cut anything scissors. You know, they'll cut anything to a certain, you know, to a certain degree. Um, I've actually used them to trim a little bit of the brass, uh, sorry, the copper plating. And did, uh, they do work, um, and they're quite, quite cheap. And you can pick them up in a lot of stores. So, um, basically this is what I've uh, come up with. There's my one side of it. I've used a bit of uh, black uh, tinted, um, I think it's black tinted polycarbonate, but it might be acrylic, I don't know. Basically got a um, big sheet of it here, which is um, scrap off something I acquired for nothing, so it's going to go in a landfill. So, um, that's what I've done. I've cut out my, my basic shape. I've uh, cut the acry acrylic or poly, and then I've made this disc, and I've folded the edges round, 
basically um, doing this edge forming is not very hard to do. Uh, I've not done a brilliant job. You can see, you know, it's, it's just tapped by ham hand, but I want it to have that sort of old handmade look to it, not machine pressed, you know. So, uh, and these little rivets which I've used um, are basically drilled through in six points. I've marked that out with a with a compass, you know. Basically, you've got the um, uh, radius, and then you mark the radius around, yeah, and that gives you your six points, yeah. Uh, right, the rivets. What I've used as rivets um, are actually these copper roofing nails. Now, or slate nails, as they call them. So, basically, they don't rust. They use for putting uh, slates up on the house, uh, or they were in the old days, uh, like when this place was built, they would have put um, these old copper slating nails on, like these slates on the roof of that place, they're uh, two foot by three foot wide, and um, don't look it from down here, but believe me when you've got them in your hand, they, w they don't half weigh a bit. Um, yes, yeah, so two foot wide by three foot long I should probably have said. Uh, anyway, um, so basically I've trimmed these down to a certain point, right, sort of just after where the little serrations are on, on the sides of them, just about that point there. Trim them off just with a pair of uh, these sort of plier come hammer things, right, I've used the cutters on there, cut through the copper nails very easily stuck them through the holes of drilled and then I've just got my very little hammer here and I've uh, rested the back the flat nail head side against the iron on the vise and then I've peened it over um, I think that's the expression peened it over like you know like the top of a, a heavily used cold chisel you know, when it's been hammered, it mushrooms over. Well, basically, um, I've just mushroomed heads until they're relatively um, smooth and create a little lump. Um, they're just basically a cheap way of making a copper rivet. Because copper rivets are quite expensive. And I don't need the little ring washers, uh, you know, the little backing washers that come with uh, rivet sets. Because... Well, I don't. It's just going straight through, um, copper to copper. So there we go. Um, I've then cut a piece of this uh, round steel uh, rod, stuck that across, and I've uh, worked that over. It started off with um, almost like, well, I first put in the vise between two pieces of angle, folded it at 90 degrees, then I put the bar across, and then I used a pair of pliers to to bend it a bit more. And then once it got to a certain point, I then just worked it along with a hammer. And I'm pretty pleased with the with the overall effect. The idea is to cut this hole out now. And uh, what I'm intending to do is curve the wood all the way around here. Curve it, you know, put it, make it smooth um, in on the rear and on the front here. Then cut a long strip of brass plate out of my old water tank um, sheet, and then. Uh, basically pin the copper sheet and hammer it into shape so that it's formed and bent out over the curved edge of the wood. That's the idea anyway. Uh, as I start to do it, I don't know, the practicalities might 
end up that I decide not to go as far as making a full curve on the wood because I might think it's too hard to shape the copper. But I have a feeling if I take my time I'll be able to do it. So once I've got um, that done, I then use these small brass escutcheon pins which are pretty cheap. I bought these in a uh, an arts and crafts store. I think it was two quid for about 100 of these. They're, they're actually just brassed, they're, so they're steel with a brass plate on them. But I reckon they'll, they'll look okay. Uh, some small brass pins into, uh, pinned down through copper plating should look okay. Yeah, so uh, that's the idea. Now, uh, the question I have is um, which side of this will look better in this room? Um, having this flat side with the two little um, sunbursts on it or the porthole. I've got to admit, I really do like that porthole. Um, the original idea was the porthole was going to go in the kitchen and be the, the sort of scruffier side, hence why where I folded the copper over here, the edging, to make the edge smooth, yeah? Uh, so the cat doesn't get cut on it. Um, this is on the back, the kitchen side. What I should have done is, uh, and I may do it if I do a second one, is put this porthole on the other side of it, on the smooth, smooth side. You know, these little dents and things, they don't really matter. They add to the patina of the overall look. So, uh, I, I, you know, like most copper things, which are, um, you know, a couple of hundred years old or, or whatever, for instance, if you go and buy uh, the likes of an old copper kettle, they have all these little dings in them, and it makes it what it is, you know, uh, the little dings and stuff in, in the copper add to the, to the appearance of it. So there's me sort of uh, poor holy cat flap and there's the copper kettle. You know, the, I'm trying to keep the overall, um, you know, look very similar. So now I'm going to use this multi-tool, which is pretty cheap, about £21, with this uh, small saw attachment. Acts a bit like a chisel, but a saw and a chisel combined. It's a bit noisy. Let's see. Hmm. Looks like I'm going to have to knock it from the other side. Probably got a slight slant. Oh, I made a mess of the paint, but there we go. There we go. There's my hole. Neater from this side, and this side's the room I'm more worried about. Uh, you know, you can't uh, can't make an omelette without cracking eggs, as the expression says. I think that looks neater than the big square box which I would have been fitting on if I'd been putting that stay well unit on it. That looks far more low key. Done now is I've worked a uh, rasp, uh, that's a wood file, 
all the way around this and I've curved off the wood I've not gone excessive with it just uh, just sort of like about a quarter of an inch all the way around rounding it off and the, uh, the reason for doing that is obviously to make a smooth area um, for the cat to slide in and out jump through up easily uh, like I could just paint this up now put plenty of paint on it and really just not worry about it uh, other option I could get a bit of uh, leather or something like that and I could uh, I could um, some pin some leather all the way around it which would also look pretty nice um, but I'm gonna have a go at uh, using a strip of copper so I've cut an inch and a half uh, trim of copper from the uh, plate that I've, that I've got and I've drilled four holes in it see one top there one on the other side near the top and then two nearer to the base not right actually at the base but you know about three inches apart from each other uh, I'm, I've just done them by eye just drilled some holes so what I'm planning is put that in there and then hammer some pins in to anchor it in those four points then I'm going to try working it round with a hammer into the shape of the of the um, curved wood then when I've worked it round the sides I'm then going to nail some pins in at intervals working all the way around it and I'll do the same on the other side then after that's all done then I'll uh, get a little brass brush um, or wire wool and I'll clean it all up so it's shiny copper this is a little suede brush really for cleaning your shoes but it's quite handy for doing um, work on copper and brass because you can uh, you can polish it up before you do say a bit of soldering here and there quite handy now what I've done here is I've just made the hinge section for the uh, for the top of it uh, what I've done uh, you'll see in a moment but first I'm just going to solder these two little points where I've rolled this hinge back round. I'm just using the same thin copper plating because I've got quite a bit of it and I thought it'll match. Now don't know really whether it's going to be strong enough in the long term. If it doesn't work out I'll take it off and maybe acquire a bit of brass or use some thin steel plate maybe. Uh, you know whatever uh, whatever I've got kicking about basically there's the hinge now I've turned this uh, basically I've formed a piece of angled brass by hammering it between these two steel angle irons yeah so I've bent that over a full strip then I've made two little cuts in the brass and I've rolled them back over basically you can do it with a pair of pliers this stuff's so easy to handle you almost do it with your fingers other than you want to try and get it so it's a nice tight um, roll you know so it so it works neatly so that's the uh, the plan I just thought rather than trying to cut this piece of brass off I'll fold that under uh, into the door um, aperture you know I could have cut it off but I just thought well you never know it might add a little rigidity to uh, the hinge plate okay so there's the hinge I've created see how it functions so that bit of copper which I've left on there goes up here under the door and this is how the brass has turned out sorry brass coppers turned out 
Uh, in the end, what I had to do was I had to take the copper plate strip in the garage, uh, stick a piece of round pipe in the garage. First of all, I bent it to the shape to sit it in here. I tried shaping it round on the wood, but it didn't really want to know. I couldn't get it um, um, enough of a curve, so I pulled it out, took it in the garage, and I hammered it over some round piping about one inch diameter to put a better curve in it. So it was a piece of steel pipe so I could knock hell out of the, uh, the, the copper better to get it into a better shape. Now it's got lots of little dings and things as uh, it would do, you know, it's been hammered by hand, but that's the, the, the general look I want of it. Now the four pins that I originally had in uh, were just really temporary ones. I had one um, the top on each side and then that's why I only put a couple in because obviously the heads would potentially cause the cat to get nicked on them if they started coming loose. Also the flap itself swinging in and out would would rub on them um, you know so uh, would cause issues. So the idea now, if this has worked out right, um, it's not. It needs a little bit of uh, teasing about at first, but um, once it, I've got the um, the wood shaped up at the top, this should swing in and out quite quite easily. Okay, that's how it's now looking. Uh, still needs a little work. I've only just temporarily put this up with a couple of panel, uh, sorry, scutcheon pins. Um, and it's going to have to wear in a bit. But, you know, it's functioning. Now, I just hope the cat's going to like it. See, this way from the kitchen, it swings up really high and wide so she can get in really easily. Uh, the other way, still all right. Uh, let's see. Let that go. Come on. There we go. Um, still not bad angle. Fairly similar to the plastic one. Uh, got the plastic one still here in the room, uh, just over here. And as a comparison. If I open that, you see it's got a similar sort of angle, um, this side, and the other way it's actually more of a right angle. So I've got, it, it's very, very similar in performance. I'm going to have to bring the cat down and uh, get it to give it a go. You know, uh, it's not got a magnet around it like the other unit has, but the weight of it, I think, will hopefully be enough to keep it sitting down, uh, swinging down and staying in its normal place. Really uh, quite chuffed with how that's worked out. Let's see. Go on, give it a go. You know what it is. You're going straight to it. What? Let's see. Come on, Stelly. Come on. Well, that works all right, doesn't it? No problems. You want some food? 
Was that you want some food? 